Hi everyone, Adam Andrews with AeroWorks Productions. Now today we're going to be talking about a very sensitive topic and that's drones and privacy. More importantly, drones and the invasion of privacy. So it was just this week that we heard of a story in the news of a 47 year old man named William Meredith who went outside with a shotgun and he said he saw a drone hovering over his backyard and he blasted it out of the sky. Now we've heard more information from both the drone pilot and the neighbors and come to find out that the drone wasn't quite as close to his house as he said it was. Either way, he got in a little trouble. The drone operator's out of a drone. And so what we want to do today is hopefully educate people that are concerned. They've seen these flying around the neighborhood or at the local park or the neighbor has one. They don't really know what they can see, but they assume that they can see through walls and into your bedroom and, and take close-up pictures of you and your driver's license and everything else. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take three drones and we're going to basically simulate what happened earlier this week with the shotgun or the drone slayer as they call them in the news. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, let's talk about a few of the UAVs that we have here today or drones. The first one we have here is the 3D Robotics Solo. This is what they call their smart drone. It retails for about $999. It requires you to put your own GoPro camera on there and that gives you the ability to shoot 2K and 4K video as well as high resolution stills. The middle copter here, this white one, is the DJI Phantom 3 professional model. This copter here retails for about $1,350. It shoots 4K video as well as high resolution stills. The third copter here is a little bit outside the hobbyist realm and this is more of a law enforcement, fire rescue, search and rescue, that sort of thing. This is made by the Arian Labs company in Canada and it's called the Sky Ranger. This particular copter here retails for over $100,000 configured the way it is, but it does a few things that these don't. It flies in any weather, rain, sleet, snow, 45 mile an hour winds gusting to 50, 50 minute flight time. It also is equipped with a dual EO and IR lens. This gives you both optical images as well as optical zoom, as well as a FLIR camera or infrared camera for looking at nighttime, seeing hot or cold images. So we're going to take all these out. We're going to run through this experiment, the same one that happened earlier than day. We're going to put these in an, in an urban environment, take them up to the altitude the copter was actually at, and show you what you can actually see and what you can do with these copters. So let's go ahead and take it outside. All right, we're out here in your typical suburbia area. We're going to go ahead and take a flight with the 3DR Solo, and we'll go ahead and take it up and see what we see. Okay, we're actually at 198 feet. We're actually way down here in this house and you can see the wind's even blowing us around, but you really can't make anybody out there. You can see a house. You can see maybe a couple bodies standing there. Now this is about 10 feet off the ground. One thing you'll notice is it's very noisy. Uh, it'd be really hard to conceal the noise, let alone the lights that you're seeing on the copter. All right guys, now we're back out here with the Phantom 3 Professional. We had to let the wind die down a little bit. We had some pretty strong winds earlier, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot now with the Phantom 3. This is the same copter that uh, the drone slayer shot down. So we're gonna actually get an actual one-to-one -one comparison here. So let's go ahead and get started. The whole plane has been a takeoff. It's a little easier to see the lights here at night too. Okay, now you can see here, this, this copter actually has a stabilized gimbal. 
So here we are again right here. And even though I'm moving the copter, the camera is very still. Now we're currently at 247 feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down a little lower because we wanna have a fair comparison here. I believe it was 173 feet. 193 feet is what my assistant's telling me. Okay, so there is 193 feet right there. And you can see that we have a great picture here. We really can't make out anybody, but we have a very stable image. And we can see exactly what the copter is seeing. We're going to go ahead and bring it back down around 10 feet. And again, you can see that it's fairly loud. All right, let's go ahead and try out the Sky Ranger. All right, and like I said, guys, this is the Arian Labs Sky Ranger. And we're, luckily we lost some light because we want to actually show you the night capabilities of it for search and rescue purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and step back. I'm going to go ahead and take control using our ruggedized tablet. And we'll go ahead and do a flight. All right, so we're currently at 62 meters. Our copter is located right there. If I wanna go ahead and see the image from that, there's our live image. And we're currently right around that 193, 197 feet altitude. If I wanna zoom in, I can zoom in. I can also move the camera around. I can take a still. Let's say I wanna flip to FLIR imagery. Go ahead and switch to our FLIR camera. And you can see, you can do white hot or black hot. There we are down there. Take it in a little closer. I'll walk around a little bit. You can even see the footprints in the grass. Take our camera off there. And we'll go ahead and fly to a new location. Oh, by the way, we've set a target right here where we're at. So even though the copter is moving away, the camera will stay put on that location there. Again, this is used for commercial applications, search and rescue, law enforcement, Fire rescue. Let's go ahead and take a look out here in the street and see if we see any vehicles or any thing that might have heat on it or we can use our FLIR cameras. You can see the vehicles down there. Take a snapshot. 
All right, guys, I hope what we were able to convey today in some of our demonstrations is that the typical hobbyist drone, it's not a surveillance machine. They don't make good spy machines. They're noisy, they have lights on them, and really, if they're down at 10 feet, which we know in this case they were not, in his case, they were up at 197 feet or even higher, 200 feet. You could see from the video that I demonstrated today that you're not going to pick out details on a person. You might be able to see a stick figure down there. You're obviously gonna see a house, you're gonna see yards, but they're really to capture wide angle, beautiful cinematic shots. They're not made or designed to do surveillance on people. Even when you get into the expensive drones, like we did a, a little bit of a dem demonstration here with the Sky Ranger, even this, has its limitations. So just know that if you see somebody out there, go up and ask them, ask them what they're filming. Have them show you the view that they get from the copter and don't freak out and uh, you know, shoot it, definitely don't shoot it down with a shotgun or any kind of a gun because again, you shoot something in the air, something's coming back down, whether that's the bullet or one of these drones. So, you know, there's a lot better ways to spy on a neighbor than using a drone. I mean, you can look over the fence, you can look out your window, you can look at their post on Facebook. One of the things I tell a lot of people in our classes is the same people that complain about privacy and drones are the same people that are on Facebook posting what they had for breakfast with a picture of themselves and a selfie. So, you know, if you don't want to be, you know, you don't want your privacy invaded, you know, stay off the internet because that's just where we're at with technology nowadays. You know, the, what people don't realize is in America today, the average American gets filmed about a hundred times a day on CCTV cameras. And that could be everything from a traffic cam, the ATM machine, department stores, the Starbucks, the McDonald's, your kid's school, and the list goes on and on and on. Cameras are everywhere, they're commonplace, and while some of them there are there for surveillance, these were not designed for that. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Check out the links below. We're gonna have a lot of different links about different things like FAA regulations, the AMA, which is the Academy of Model Aeronautics, which is not a governing body. They are a private organization that you can become a member of, and they have their own rules at their own clubs. They do not regulate airspace. They don't regulate anything outside of their clubs. The FAA does that, and that's what they're working on creating regulations for. So check out the links below. We'll have all kinds of different information. Uh, stay tuned for more great videos. Subscribe and like the video and leave a comment, and uh, we'll see you soon.